new technology, more horsepower, smaller wheels. This is the new generation of boosted turbochargers. <laughs> All right guys, so this is a pretty exciting uh, addition to our range. This is the boosted 6782, 7282, and 7682 turbochargers. So this is a new range in that 45 frame. Um, if, you, you know, if you remember like GT45s and things like that, so frame size is that next one up. So we've previously introduced the uh, 7975 uh, and 7375, which was a 42 frame. And this is the big brother to that. So horsepower wise, we're starting off uh, at around 1125 with the 6782. Then we've got 1350 with the 7282. And then we've also got 1500 horsepower capable in the 7682. So you might say, well, why do we need this one when we've got a 7975 that's capable of 1450 horsepower? And the main reason for that is related to engine capacity. So this being an 82 millimetre turbine, it has more room and more capability to flow a larger volume of exhaust gas. So while you may not need quite as much uh, compressor, I suppose compressor duty, when you come back to the boost level that you're gonna put into a larger engine to gain the same horsepower, you still need to be able to get that exhaust gas out. So while we're not spinning the front as fast perhaps, or you know, we don't have to compress quite as much air from the inducer of the compressor, we still need to get all of that exhaust gas out. And there's only so much that you can do with a particular size wheel. Obviously we float a lot more on a 75 millimeter wheel with a nine blade turbine, but you could argue, okay, just take another blade out so that a 75 mil will flow more, but it's just not gonna happen because you'll lose drive uh, from the turbine wheel because the blade isn't there to catch that exhaust. So that's where we need to go to a larger, a larger turbine wheel. Aside from the reasons, let's get into uh, the specs on these, on these turbos. So uh, as with all of our turbochargers, the name gives you an indicator as to the sizing uh, of the wheels in it. So on the front here, this is known as the compressor wheel. We've been over it plenty of times before. Uh, our turbochargers feature a 7075 billet compressor wheel. That is a higher quality aircraft grade material. That is a higher quality than some of the other products on the market. You can also see that this is point milled. Uh, so you'll see all those little ridges and the little dimples on the compressor wheel. That's a point milling. And that adds quite a significant amount of efficiency to the compressor wheel, which is what's allowing these turbos to make more horsepower with smaller wheels. Uh, the inducer on uh, this one, for example, the 1350 option is a 72 millimeter inducer. Then we come through to the core, which is the nice short uh, new generation core, which is making the overall length of the turbocharger shorter. These are a ball bearing and water cooled core. It is required that you run water through these cores uh, for warranty purposes, but also the longevity of the turbocharger. Being ball bearing, it's only a very small bearing race. So we don't want a great deal of oil going in there because it floods the bearing. Because there's a small amount of oil going through there, the water is required to cool the cartridge, to cool the core. So it's very important that you do hook up the water ports uh, that are on either side. Moving from the core, we're going back to the turbine wheel. As I mentioned, all three of these run an 82 millimeter turbine. It is a nine blade turbine. Um, on these, so plenty of exhaust flow, uh, but still quite a lot of response thanks to the new aerodynamics that have been built into these turbochargers. Uh, and that's basically going to allow you to have higher horsepower, but still excellent response. Another reason why uh, the response is great on these turbochargers, I touched on it before, is the overall length of the turbocharger. Being that the core is shorter, and then the turbine shaft or the turbocharger shaft through the center is shorter again it brings both of the wheels closer together so your compressor wheel and your turbine wheel is closer together which means that it's easier 
for the turbine wheel to be driven and then drive the compressor wheel as well. So it's going to spool up quicker, basically. So if you were to compare this to a previous generation uh, turbocharger, which I mean, we didn't have an exact comparison to it, but you could look to uh, say an 8077 that we had. The wheels were a little bit different. You had a larger compressor and the smaller turbine. And that was from the thinking of jamming all of that exhaust gas into the small turbine wheel to get it to spin quicker uh, and then bring the larger wheel on to be able to create a large amount of boost. We've gone the other way here with a larger turbine, which takes the inertia from, well, takes the energy from the exhaust gas to spin that wheel. And then it's less energy and less inertia to in turn spin the smaller in inducer on the compressor wheel. So great response and great power. Uh, if we come back to the front, uh, like many of our, many of our boosted turbochargers, you'll find the 1 8th NPT reference port uh, that's on here. You can just see here. This is for your boost reference, for your boost controller, uh, and then also the compressor speed sensor port. Uh, so please don't mix these up as well. This is not for a boost reference. This here is for a boost reference. That's where you put your compressor wheel speed sensor. That's if you're running that on your aftermarket ECU. Also on the front, you'll notice that we've got this large outlet uh, which features the V-band, so you can clamp directly onto that to solid mount it. Alternatively, you can buy one of our cast alloy elbows uh, to weld that um, or chop that off and weld whatever you need to onto there. It's very important to notice, note though that you still need some sort of flexibility if you're mounting uh, the turbocharger and it's going perhaps directly to uh, throttle body or if there's going to be a mount to support this turbocharger that's not on the motor, make sure you have some flexibility because if you weld directly or you use a solid clamp on here, it actually puts quite a lot of load through the core of the turbocharger. So it's just something to keep in mind. Things are expanding, there's a lot of heat, a lot of vibration. So the more solid and rigid you make things, unless it's mounted directly on the motor and then it goes to the throttle body, so it's gonna move with the engine, you need to have some sort of flexibility there. So whether it's silicon hose or one of our billet intercooler clamps that allow some movement there, just keep that in mind. If we move to the rear, we've got these uh, new compact design T4 housings. So these are available um, in 0.85. You've got a 1.0, a 1.15, and then a 1.28 in a T4 housing. We also have multiple housings coming in a dual V-band, so V-band entry uh, with V-band outlet. Uh, they will also be 0.85, a 1.0, 1.5, uh, sorry, excuse me, 1.15, and then uh, should be a 1.28, we'll gauge um, demand uh, as to where we go with all of those housings, but um, yeah, you're gonna have something in there for you. All right guys, now you know all about this new gen range of turbos, which is 7682, 7282, and 6782, anywhere from 1125 horsepower through to 1500 horsepower. If you've got any questions as far as application is concerned, please feel free to send us an email at boosted at aeroflowperformance.com or give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out. To see these servos in the flesh, you can check them out at your local distributor, a quality retail outlet, or online at aeroflowperformance.com.